Hello, let's play as we are playing the case of the uh, puzzling pooches. We spoke to Dr. Kenya, so let's speak to no doubt Portia. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Polaria. I keep calling her Portia. But in any case, a large, snooty looking Afghan hound is sitting in a booth marked Princess Titania. Or Titania. Um, the pedigree displayed behind her shows her champion bloodlines blood and her owner's name, Mrs. Polaria. It's got a very weird long snout. A little card on the side of the book reads, Princess Titania was trained by the pretty puppy obedience school, Miss, Mrs. Edith Preston, proprietor. Stay away from her children. Kiki's as nervous as she can be after days of bazaar fiasco and who can blame her i can't understand what made her run away oh god i'm so fright well not frightful um something like that flighty she's never disobeyed me in competition before today i told her to sit and suddenly she perked up her ears and dashed from the ring i'm going to disown her wait who's he he the booth says your doll's name is princess titania Princess Titania is Kiki's formal name, the name she's registered under at the American Kennel Club. Her court name, the name we call her at home, is Kiki. Okay, nice to know. Gentleman Valiant, known as Misha, belongs to Nicola Hamble. Ooh. I think I'm going to blame Nicola for now. His papers say that he is a Springer Spaniel. He attended Pretty Puppy Obedience School. I'm very happy for Mrs. Harper and her dog, too, but I can't help feeling sad. Misha's won best in breeds prizes before, and we worked extra hard in the obedience school for this combined competition. It was so unlike him to dash away from the ring that way. He responded if, if he heard someone calling him, but I didn't hear anything. Silent whistle, maybe? I hate to say this, but I think I should ask for a refund at the pretty puppy obedience school and take Misha somewhere else. Hey, Nancy. I was ta taking some pictures of the show for our school paper the Tiger Press. So wait, all those all those articles in the Tiger Press were probably written by you. So it's not really exciting if we get inside it, is it? <sighs> anyway. At least we still have the courier, not written by her. When I noticed that some of the champion dogs were acting really strangely. You see Mr. Karichi's bulldog, Shadow, right? Oh, you've seen? I didn't see him at all. Well, his turn came from obedience trials, and he just ran off the stage, dragging Mr. Karichi behind him. No wonder we can't see him, because they're not here. Well, it was the same for Misha and Kiki. They did... They did well in confirmation. The part where they... Their looks are complete, uh, compared to their breed standards, but when it came to obedience trials, they just ran off, ruining their chances. Those three dogs were bound to win ribbons. It can't be a coincidence. Maybe it just won't be Nicola Hamble, because Nicola Hamble's dog lost. I blame Mrs. Harper, then. Mrs. Harpo. Let's go visit Mr. Crank, because I love visiting Mr. Crank. Oh, and so his name is Professor. He would be unhappy that I <coughs> that I didn't call him Professor, 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 pr pr Professor. I wonder what wacky new invention Professor Crank is working on now. He can be pretty busy. Well, but sorry, pretty cranky if he's busy. So we'd better be quick. Let's look at the dog. What in the world is that? Fika is a robot dog made of metal and electronic circuits. He is shaped like a Dutch hound. Dutch hound? I don't really know much about dogs. Or the pronunciation of their names. A digital gauge on Fika's side reads charging. Elapsed time, 29 minutes. The robot is plugged into an outlet at, on the wall. Hey, box of junk. Professor Crank... Uh, sorry, Professor Crank's <laughs> experimental table is covered... Table? That looks like a crate. In bits of scrap metal, a few microchips, and a soldering iron, a box underneath the table containing the remnants of some of his failed projects. The box contains a pair of scorched hiking boots with tiny rocket engines attached to the sides. There is also a creepy looking jar of glowing green sludge with a label on the side that says, Do not feed. Okay, we, w we won't feed it, Professor Crank. Ah, 
kids, just in time to see my latest experiment. This is the invention that will make my fortune. Every home will have one. Meet Pika, the robot dog. Isn't he magnificent? His name is Pika. Sta oh, sorry, his name Pika stands for Pet Imitating Canine Automaton. I programmed him to behave exactly like a real dog. He barks, walks, heals, and sits on the command of a silent dog whistle. I trained him using dog obedience books from the library. But he'll never scratch the front door or shed hair all over your new pants right before you leave for school. He's the perfect pet. I took him for a walk in the park earlier to test his responses to the whistle commands, and I'm satisfied that he's working properly. I can't wait to call the patent office. Oh, Mr. Crank, I think you may have done a bit of a mistake doing it at the park today. But, um, let's keep investigating because you never know. <laughs> Anthony's working. He's good looking. Ah, uh, here we are. The folks at Creepy Critters Pet Shop know a lot about dogs. Maybe they can help us with our case. Miss Grichy. I just came from the dog show in the park. I don't want to be some sort of spoiled sport, but I think there was some monkey business with the dogs. My little shadow was in the ring, doing just fine, while all of a sudden all the dogs started whining. My shadow, this... he started pulling me out of the ring, towards the woods. I can't believe that my shadow would disappear me. He's always been such a good dog. He was a star pupil in Mrs. Preston's obedience class. Shadow is Mr. Creechie's bulldog. His collar has a name tag engraved with his formal name. Vincento... Vincento? Vicento Caruso. Hey, what's this? A flyer for the dog show has been taped to the front window of Mr. Grimaldi's shop. Announcing the Richfield Dog Fantasy's third co annual dog show and competition. Prizes for the top three dogs compete in two rounds of judging. Best of breed and most obedient. All dogs must be entered two hours prior to show. Hello, Mr. Grimaldi. I'm so sorry to hear about what happened at the dog show. I recommended Mrs. Preston to Mr. Carici to help train Shadow. She's an excellent trainer. She used to train hunting dogs in England. That's very difficult. It's called field training. I don't know why I have this accent. I think it's because my name is Grimaldi. In field training, trainers use whistles and calls to teach their dogs to help a hunter. Calls are words they shout to the dogs. Mrs. Preston uses a silent dog whistle here in town in her field training so that the neighbors aren't disturbed. Okay. The counter at Creepy Critters has a few boxes of dog toys, a glass bowl with some Siamese fighting fish, and some business cards. Uh, the business cards say Moondog Canaan Educators Obedience Through Understanding. First lesson free with its card. Anthony Carici is restocking the pet shop shelves. He's putting cuttlefish bones and silent dog whistles out on the shelf. These are some of the hottest items. Cuttlefish bones are good for parakeets to scratch their beaks on, and other birds. We had a bird that loved cuttlefish. And these silent dog whistles sell like hotcakes. I even sold one to Professor Crank this week. I didn't think, even think he had a dog. But who can tell with him? My dad's pretty upset about Shadow uh, blowing the trials. Maybe he should call Moondog Canine's educators. The owner, Randy Hicks, left some business cards on our counter. He's new in town, I guess. Or maybe he did it. Maybe he did it! But, um... Let's go to the public library. Hi, buddy. Oh, look, it's Jay Lightfoot. Why well, are you not pulling any scams today, are you, Jay Lightfoot? In any case, we're running out of time, so we're going to cut the video here. Oh, uh, yeah, no, we're going to cut the video here. And um, we'll be back soon. See you later.